It's been a while since I washed a crotch rocket on camera, but my dad recently swapped his temperamental Italian stallion for this reliable Japanese triple, so thought now was as good a time as any. Now, while the 10,000 mile MT-09 wasn't hanging with deeply ingrained grime or anything, it had recently been out in the rain and on a few dry country runs before that, so it was definitely dirty enough for a back garden guru clean. And I wanted to keep it relatively cheap and cheerful here, so as well as teaming up with Pouch to potentially save some money, which I'll get to in a moment, I grabbed an affordable Demon Valet pack from Carplan to do the bulk of the work, the contents of which I'm pretty sure I've not used myself or featured on video before. Now, speaking of affordability, big thanks to Pouch, the completely free desktop browser extension that automatically goes out of its way to find and apply the best discount codes when you're shopping online for sponsoring the video. So to see what it could initially do for me, I went shopping in the shed for an entry-level domestic pressure washer for my dad to use to keep his bike clean once I'd finished with it and found a Karcher K2 on Euro Car Parts for $79.99. And sure enough, once I got to the checkout pouch, automatically popped up after finding a few relevant discount codes, which ultimately saved me over £24 on the contents of my basket once they've been applied. So, Pouch works on over 3,000 UK websites, including the likes of Halfords, eBay and QuickFit, which is more than any other similar browser extension in the UK. It's dead easy to install, taking just a few simple clicks, and once you've made sure you've pinned it to your browser, that's it, you're good to go. So click the link at the top of this video's description to get Pouch for free right now and see what kind of automatic savings you can make. So with my Karcher K2 days well and truly behind me, fired up the heavy juicy Kranzel instead in preparation for a bucket fill and pre-clean. Now, much like when cleaning a car, it makes sense to tend to the wheels of a bike first too. So taking advantage of the fact it was now secured on paddock stance, treated the pair of them to a good rotational spray over with the Demon Machine Cleaner product, which doesn't come with the kit, so had bought it separately. Then after being left to soak for a moment to break down the heavier surface dirt and brown brake dust, thoroughly rinse the wheels off at reduced pressure as unless absolutely caked in heavy mud or something, there's no need to hit the exposed components of a bike of full whack. Once they've been given a good pre-rinse, the wet wheels were then liberally doused with the Demon Wheels product, which smelt a little weak for my liking, but the electric blue wheels weren't that dirty following the pre-clean, so it was confident a quick soak with this, then thorough brush over should do the job. Now, agitating the wheels of a bike with detail in brushes like this can be a bit of a faff as things like disc brakes and sprockets tend to want to get in the way. But on the flip side, there's no tight, deeply recessed barrels to tend to like on the wheels of a sporty car. So reckon it all likely pans out to roughly the same amount of work. The wheels were then washed over with a shampoo prime soft wool wheel mitt and while this isn't necessary, I like to do it after applying a wheel cleaner I haven't used before. Plus, it's always nice to wash things over by hand, but as I say, it isn't strictly necessary, so it's entirely up to you. To finish up the wheel clean, the narrow tyre walls were then given a bit of a scrub with a stiff brush to release any ingrained grime, being careful not to scuff the rim, which was easier said than done. And once I felt they were as good as they could realistically get with these products, rinsed both wheels off once more to remove the majority of the suds and any lingering Demon Wheels product before moving on to the body of the bike. As with the wheels, the body was rinsed down before any physical contact was made to both remove the loose grit that was sitting on the surface and to help carry any cleaning product subsequently applied to the various nooks and crannies it might not otherwise get to if applied dry.
Once wet and free from loose abrasive dirt particles, the more mechanical parts of the bike that you wouldn't expect a shampoo alone to sufficiently clean were treated with the same machine cleaner used on the wheels. And while I know some grease monkeys consider this kind of in-depth strip clean to be unnecessary, I prefer the sporty machinery I'm working on to be free from visible oil and grease, but you can and arguably should re-lubricate any essential components following a thorough clean like this anyway, so try not to get your bandanas in too much of a twist. Once the exposed mechanical parts have been degreased with the machine cleaner, the synthetic trim seat was given a dedicated cleanse with the lighter Demon Clean APC to lift out any unseen cack and previous owner's leather clad farts, which of course is a critical part of the used bike detailing process. So sprayed liberally, agitated with a soft detailing brush, then thoroughly rinsed off at reduced pressure, which seemed to do the trick. So with any parts that required a separate deeper clean having been tended to, it was then time to suds up the naked Japanese triple with a strong concentration of the Demon Foam product, which can be used as both a dedicated snow foam and contact wash shampoo. So it began by blanketing the bike over with a thick layer of dedicated and hopefully long dwelling suds. They were then left to soak into the bike's various details for a minute or so, and instead of rinsing them off, thought because they were made from the same product that I'd be washing with, I'd keep the suds in situ. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of painted or glossy parts to tend to, so after giving the few that were a suitable contact wash with a microfiber mitt, followed with a once-over of the surrounding satin-finished surfaces, and if you're wondering why this short nap mitt over a more plush one, it was to stop unsightly stray fibres getting snagged on the bike's various design details, and from that perspective was uh, definitely the right choice. Now, while I'm not usually a fan of cheap shampoos like these, as you generally need to double or even triple the dosage to get any real suds and cleaning power, I did like this one after emptying a quarter of a bottle into my bucket, which to be honest I don't think was entirely necessary, as I got the feeling even with just a few more glugs than recommended it still would have been adequately sudsy and slick. So once all areas had been treated to a thorough contact wash, the bike was given one final rinse with the pressure washer, being as thorough as I could without getting too up close and personal. As much like a modern engine bay, a modern bike like this should be able to take a good wetting down or three, but there's still components lurking out of sight that won't benefit from sustained exposure to pressurised water. So rinsed it off enough to remove the suds and any last stray bits of dirt, but no more than that. My Metro Sidekick blower, which was originally designed for use on bikes, was then fired up to remove the bulk of the rinse water from the Yamaha's sodden nooks and crannies. And as with most other parts of the cleaning process, it makes sense to work from top to bottom when blow drying to prevent blasting water onto previously dried parts. Plus, when working on lower areas, you need to be careful around puddles of standing water or dust so you don't recontaminate your bike or car with all the grime you've just removed. I wanted to give the Demon Shine product, which I think is primarily intended for use on damp panels, a go, so generously spritz the still wet wheels with the sweet smelling pink product before drying them over with a clean general purpose towel, which seemed to work well and leave them with a nice slick streak and smear free finish.
To get a feel for it dry, I then sprayed it over the various exposed satin painted parts of the bike before wiping them over. And while it obviously wasn't going to leave them looking glossy, still served to spruce them up and I assume leave some superficial protection behind that will both help to repel dirt and make future maintenance washing that little bit easier. Next up was a light enhancement of what little non-painted plastic there was on the bike with the pretty much odourless Demon Tires product as I obviously couldn't dress these particular items but figured I could still try it out on some other areas. So the silicon free formulation was first brushed over a few parts including the rubber radiator hoses which for such a watery product left them looking surprisingly rejuvenated and while some surfaces were subsequently wiped over with a towel to dampen them down a bit others were simply left as they were. Now while I doubt the finish it left will last very long, especially on components that will get hot and likely cause it to evaporate, as a quick means to visually enhance the various nooks and crannies here it performed well, even doing a good job of eating through some unsightly wax residue. The bike was then relocated into the shed for a change of scene and said that I could tend to a few bits under cover starting with the removal of some more wax residue from around the badges and stickers and some adhesive from the digital display, all of which was a relatively straightforward affair using a wooden kebab skewer and an isopropyl alcohol primed general purpose towel wrapped finger. Now although the painted blue petrol tank wasn't particularly heavily swirled it still made sense to at least treat it to a single stage polish with my cordless mini to brighten it up a bit as it does likely get brushed up against when riding plus it probably hadn't had a dedicated polish in its four year life so got to work giving it a relatively thorough dual action jobby before buffing off the residue with a fresh general purpose towel. Now I wasn't aiming for full correction or anything here as my dad will likely be wiping it over with a damp shed sponge at some point soon but if I could enhance it a bit for the sake of 5 or 10 minutes work then great. The digital speedo was also a bit scratched and swirled so after switching to a smaller 1 inch spot pad gave that a similar once over to restore some clarity and knock back the majority of the light marks without distorting the surface before buffing it off with another fresh towel to prevent inflicting any new marks on the soft plastic surface. I then finished the job off with a dry spritz of the Demon Shine protectant on the tank which was applied directly and buffed off to leave an incredibly slick feeling finish on the freshly polished paintwork. Again I've got no idea how long it'll last but it's so easy to apply and you get so much of it for your money that it not lasting forever shouldn't really be a cause for complaint. 
Then, aside from a last once over and dust off to remove any loose bits and bobs from the freshly cleaned and detailed surfaces, left it at that as the foul mouthed scaffolders were due in the back garden behind. The bedroom band boy next door was about to fire up his electric guitar and start bellowing ballads out the window, and the seagulls were due a good kick off, so had to take advantage of the last half hour of relative quiet and sanity to catch some aftershots. Now, I wasn't aiming for fully detailed perfection with this clean and likely wouldn't have been able to achieve that with these products anyway, but the cheap and cheerful demon items did do a surprisingly good job at sprucing up the NT09's various four-year-old surfaces, and so will likely be used on the bike again by my dad in due course. So the machine cleaner served as an effective pre-wash for the wheels and capable degreaser for the grubby mechanical parts. The Demon wheels, although not particularly potent, could potentially be a cost-effective regular maintenance cleaner for wheels that don't get too ingrained. The weaker APC seemed to work well on the Yamaha's seat and I'm sure will be up to the job of giving a car's interior surfaces a sufficient once over. The Demon foam, at least at the concentrated levels I used it, created sufficiently thick suds and felt slick and capable when being applied from a bucket by hand. The glossy looking but non-greasy silicon free demon tyres, although not actually used on any here, was still great for quickly sprucing up the rubber hoses and various other suitable surfaces, and the demon shine which was dead easy to use wet or dry left a super slick feel and finish, especially on the polished petrol tank, and while I can't realistically comment on the durability of these products, can say that they were all pretty painless to use and obviously didn't break the bank. So if you've got to grips with any of these affordable products before, let me know what your experience was with them in the comments below. Don't forget to check the link in the description too to potentially make some automatic online savings with Pouch. And I'll see you again with another dedicated narrated video before the end of the month.